My name is King Kwanaa Bunny Israel, the zeal of Ahia, from the tribe of Judah, from the children of light, Israelites. And today, the topic that we're going to get into is going to be addressing the leaders and the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Today, the name of this topic is called the lost sheep and the lying leaders of the house of Israel. Okay? Because our people, they are lost. All right? And our leaders... They are keeping them docile, telling them don't go into certain information, telling them don't go into certain books, 
and they can perceive from the spirit that what? This is indeed the will of the Most High. But today, we're going to go through the scriptures, and through the spirit of the Most High, we're going to bring out the information according to as it is written, according to the spirit, all right? And give you the understanding, okay? But first and foremost, I want to say all praises to Ahaya Asha Ahaya, Bahashem Yacheya Wahakodashi Ruaka. Shemaya Sha'ala Ahaya, Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shemaya Sha'ala Ahaya, Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shemaya Sha'ala Ahaya, Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Hero Israel, the Most High Power is one. Kal Hawad Wahalala Ahaya Asha Ahaya, Bahashim Yacheya Wahakodashi Ruaka Sila. So, the first scripture we're going to get into today is going to be Jeremiah. Chapter 50, verses 5 through 6. That's Jeremiah, chapter 50, verses 5 through 6. And it reads, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from the mountains to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them devoured them. And the adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Most High. The habitation of justice, even the Most High, the hope of their fathers. So, you see right here, we have been given to all nations as sheep, okay, for the slaughter. And yet and still, they count themselves not guilty, because our people have sinned against the Holy Covenant. All right? And it is only through us breaking the covenant you give leeway to Satan to come against you because you're walking away from the laws of life and you're being shrouded in death. And when you walk into death, guess what? The ways of sin is death. So if that's what you're walking into, that's what you're eating, and that's how you're living, that shall be your recompense. So our people walked away like sheep, going to spray, okay, the Negroes, all right, scattered to the four corners, okay, but yet and still, our people, our leaders, have been lying to us. They hold themselves guilty as not as well, excuse me. Just as the Edomite been slaughtering us for years and hold themselves not guilty. And our so-called leaders of the Christian church and these Hebrew Israelites camp keeping our people docile. But we're going to see, according to Zechariah chapter 11, verses 4 through 5, we're going to get more information concerning the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? And Zechariah chapter 11, verses 4 through 5. And it reads, Thus says the Most High, my power, Feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them, and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Most High, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pitied them not. Wow. You see that once again? So for sinning, we have been given into the hands of the enemy. The enemy has been killing us for hundreds of years. Like sheep, we have all went astray. All right? But today, the Most High is showing us that we will be gathered in the Spirit. The Most High is showing us that the Good Shepherd, the SC Messiah, will definitely bring us back. Okay, to the most high. Okay, as it is written, thus shall it be. And we're going to look at that analogy in Psalms chapter 44, verse 11. Psalms chapter 44, verse 11. And it reads, Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat, and hast scattered us amongst the heathen. Thou sellest thy people for naught, and thou doest not increase thy wealth. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn, a derision to them that are round about us. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of head amongst our people. So you see right there, we have been given and scattered to all nations. 
We have been given to be a byword, a derision. We have been given to be a scorn amongst all nations. They look at us and say, look at these Negroes out here dancing, partying, acting crazy. They don't even know they the people are the chosen people of the most high. And look at them, they dumb and acting silly like they just the monkeys out here, right? Okay, and then the, the hatred that our people show towards each other, it is disgusting, all right? So it don't matter to me what color you are, what nation you are, it is the spirit, okay? It's a lot of devils among Israel, all right? And be the same ones that be ready to kill you, okay? So we see right now, our people are shaking their heads. They have been given to the nations, and our people don't want to come back. They like sheep. Do you know the characteristics of a sheep? A sheep is directionless, deficient, excuse me, defensiveless, and just plain dumb. All right? And we see the, the um, physical characteristics of a sheep that links to what the spiritual Israelites to show you in the spirit. The Israelites, the characteristics physically of a sheep show you who the Israelites is in the physical world, which are the directions, excuse me, directionless, defensiveless Negroes. All, and guess what? They devour each other, our own people. It's sad, okay? But we see for sin against the law of life, we have been given into what? The hands of the nations. We have been given unto all nations, scattered, okay? And we're going to look into that analogy deeper to see the scattering of the stiff-necked Israelites, all right? That do not want to listen, and they think they have it in their heart, the way that they're supposed to go. They think that they got righteousness, and you know what? The, Le the Leviticus law, I, it did. you know what? You're off, I, you're off, okay? So we're going to get that information. Amos chapter 9, verse 9. And we're going to see that the Most High indeed was the one who scattered the Israelites for abiding in their trespasses against the law of life, all right? And sinning against creation. Amos chapter 9, verse 9, and it reads, For lo, I will command and I will swift the house of Israel amongst all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall unto the earth. Verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So you see right here, we have been given into the hands of all nations because we have been sinned against the law of life, and yet and still, our people still talking about, we ain't gonna, nothing ain't going to happen. You see that? We can sin, we can just do what we want to do. All of y'all shall die by the sword, okay? As it is written, so shall it be. All right, so let's continue with that understanding. We're going to get into Ezekiel 38 because even though we have been given into the hands of all nations, it is only because of the stiff-neckedness of our heart. We are the chosen people, a holy nation, and yet and still, we was the worst ones sacrificing children and all kind of stuff. The madness, the Israelites was wicked as hell, okay? That's why we fail. And some of y'all still be talking about our ancestor did and our ancestor did. If our ancestors were so great and they kept the law, right? We wouldn't be in captivity, right? Right. So guess what? It is on us to bring forth a new way according to what the Most High have shown us, the law of life, to love all creation. It is only once you align with all creation and you have love for all life that indeed the fire of life will flow through you, okay? It is only then. So we're going to look at that information and we're going to bring out this information according to Ezekiel chapter 38 and we're going to start from verse 23 and down to 29. Excuse me, Ezekiel 39, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 39 and we're going to start from verses 23 down to 29. And it reads, And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore I hid my face from them, and gave them into the hands of their enemies. 
so fell they by the sword, according to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them, and have hid my face from them. Verse 25. Therefore thus says the Most High Power, Now I will bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. Verse 26. After that they have borne their sins and their shame and trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. Verse 27, when I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' land and I am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Verse 28, then shall they know that I am the most high their power which caused them to be led into captivity amongst the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Verse 29. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I will pour my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the most high power. So, I just read a lot. So we're going to go through that in particular points that I'm going to give particular breakdown. So the heathen will know the only reason they ruled over us is because we sinned against the law of life. We broke creation and what? The Most High let the heathen rule over us. Verse 24, the Most High say he will hide his face from us because of the uncleanness which we have done. What? The eating of dead body parts and maggots. Okay, guts. You chitlin eaters, okay? Even you animal eaters, you flesh eaters, okay? Cannibalistic carnivores, okay? Y'all, that's what the most I'm talking about, the uncleanness. The most I turned his face away from that, eating up his animals, all right? Verse 25, he left our captivity. The most I will lift our captivity and have mercy upon us. So we see the gathering of the Israelites once again in the spirit, verse 27, he said he would gather us from our enemy's land. Verse 28, the heathen shall know our Allah, which is a higher, who required not blood, okay, who have said he required not blood. What? Obedience is better than sacrifice, okay? Stop eating up the animals, all right? We're going to keep going. Verse 29, Ahia will pour his spirit out, his ruah out on the elect. And we see right now that time is upon us. He has poured out his spirit amongst the house of Israel. We are bringing forth the doctrine of life. We are bringing forth healing. We are bringing forth power, all right? This is not a dead doctrine. This doctrine will change Israel. Those who want life, those who want love, those who want peace and want to worship the most high and gladness of all things without the nations dictating to us how we should operate, okay? This awakening is, has begun. The Essenes are awake. The Hasadim, we will gather in spirit. As it is written, thus shall it be. And the Most High have poured out the spirit of truth amongst the house of Israel because this is indeed true. And we're going to look into the spirit of truth, how it was given unto us to gather us to the Mashiach as our good shepherd. So let us look at that. St. John chapter 15, verse 25 through 27. And it reads, But this comes to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. Verse 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you in the Father's name, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, which we know is a translation error. It is she, okay? She will testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. So let's look into this information. The spirit of truth will gather the elect in the character of the most high. And like I just stated earlier, that translation error, it, it is the word in Greek, akinos. It is a feminine spirit. It means what? It is not he. It means neuter thing. G1565 in your Strong's Concordance, all right? It is akinos. It means that one neuter one, which is a feminine spirit. Okay, she. All right. So we see the spirit of truth. She is gathering us, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach, okay, Kwadoshi, 
All right, she is gathering us in love and truth in the law of life, all right, in the gospel of the Holy Twelve and the law of Moses, both, all right. Anything in the law of Moses that conflicts against the law of life, we know it is from Satan, all right, because the holy law changes not. It has been the beginning from the beginning, and it has been the same from the beginning, okay? So we're going to get that understanding. We're going to look deeper into this analogy and see the Ruach gathering us in the spirit because all these prophecies that came to pass through this book, even though they have distorted our book and they have put lying pens of the scribes have did this and the lying pens of the scribes have did that, we understand, but through the Ruach, through the spirit, those who have the spirit, because a lot of you Israelites, you do not have the spirit. You can't see nothing but what's written. If they burn these books up, what you gonna you gonna be like, uh, uh, what we gonna do? What the law at? We, it, we don't got the law. The law is written on our hearts, okay? Those who indeed know the New Testament, it is written in our hearts, all right, in our spirits. We can look out and perceive the law of life, all right? And with that being said, we're gonna look into that. The Holy Spirit gathering us, all right? None of these prophecies shall fail. Everyone shall come to pass, and if you live by the sword, you shall be given unto the sword. If you love death, death shall come for you. It's that simple. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. The book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Because the truth needs to come out now. The lying leaders of the house of Israel have been lying from day one, and then they would tell you, oh, we went into these books years ago, but you still ain't teaching to the people because you don't have the spirit of truth, you're in the spirit of error, okay? And you 501c3, you with the, you hooked up with the Babylonian system, all right? So all you camp members, all camps teach lies, every last one of them. They have some truth for those who are coming to a certain point of an awakening, some truth, but most of all is lies, okay? So, Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, and it reads, Seek ye out of the book of the Most High and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded it, and his spirit it has gathered them. So we see right here, her mate. Once again, we see the feminine spirit have been commanded the Ruach to gather the elect and the spirit, okay? Not one of these shall fail. History lines up with the scriptures, okay, perfectly. As far as the Atlantic slave trade and all the curses that have been on our people, but yet and still, our people can't see the law of life. They are still in darkness. All they can see is the law of the letter. Well, what has written that? What scripture that is? You try to tell them, look, man, just look at it. You're eating a dead body part. Okay? Just think about it. Even from a, just on a common level, you're eating a decaying body part, all right, that has maggots and parasites in it. How could you justify that? There's nothing that can justify that, okay? And you think the most I told you to eat maggot dead carcasses, all right? You see Leviticus 11 right there, all right, what about that? You don't have the Ruach. Truly, I will not go back and forth with you. I am for those who want change, who want healing, who want life, who want to get out of this place and live unto the most high, all right? His sheep, all right, we are coming back to him. And I am sent here to get the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You lying pastors, you will be exposed, all right? I pronounce a curse upon you, all right? Those who are not teaching the law of life and those who are lying to the children of Israel and know that they are lying to them, I pray that a curse come upon you, all right, in the name of Yahweh Hamashiach, all right? And let the Most High judge between me or you, since you're saying that these laws are not true, let the Spirit of Truth judge between me and you, all right? The Gospel of the Holy Twelve versus the law of the letter, okay? With that being said, let us continue. We see the elect gathering in the spirit, all right? We're going to gather to the good shepherd, which is the Essene Messiah, which is the one who had to face all kind of death and turmoil for what? To bring us back to the most high. And now when you show people the Essene Messiah, they reject him. 
All right, you show them, look, the law of life, man, you're supposed to be eating the animals up. Messiah came to put away with the blood sacrifice. Messiah came away to put away with eating other animals. And guess what? They still be, what about this? Ah, what about that? Ah, Leviticus 11. Ah, you know what? I ain't going back and forth with you Pharisees, you scribes, you Romanites, and you Hebrew Christian likes. All right? We ain't finna be going back and forth. This is for those who want truth who want healing, who want the parasites out of their body, who want the demons off of them, okay, who do not want to eat the dead carcasses of innocent creatures being shrouded in blood. And so we're going to look at the Messiah gathering us as the Good Shepherd. Matthew chapter 18, verses 11 through 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, Verses 11 through 13. And it reads, For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, do he not leave the ninety-nine and go into the mountains and seek it that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiced more of that sheep than of the ninety-nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So you see the Most High have sent me to get his little ones, to gather his sheep that we may leave this place, that we may come together in the spirit, that we may what? Have our own community. Hashtag Essene community. All right? That we may worship the Most High in peace without the other nations trying to dictate to us, without the abominable practices going on in Babylon, all right? As it is written, thus shall it be, we shall rebuild the ruined places, okay? We shall inhabitate the desolate places, all right? So we see the Most High, the one sheep that wants to abide under the shepherd that wants to what? Listen to the living word that has seen Messiah. He will leave 99 sheep that say, oh, we righteous. We good over here. He will leave you 99 for one sheep. All right? That one sheep out of 99 that's going to listen and that's going to say, okay, you know what? I do see this ain't right to be eating these dead bodies like that and maggots and decomposing bodies. I just, wait, well, yeah, that ain't right. Right? Those are the ones. That's the sheep because what? Those who hear the most high voice is indeed their sheep. And so we're going to continue looking into another analogy concerning, all right, the most high rejoicing or the Messiah, I would say, the good shepherd rejoicing over the one sheep that follows the law of life and leaving the 99 that scream of the law of Moses. Let us look at that analogy in Luke chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. Luke chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, and it reads, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, do not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Verse 5, And when he had found it, he lived on his shoulders rejoicing. Verse 6, And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise... Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents more than over 99 just persons who needs no repentance. So you see this analogy in this parable again. All you Hebrew Israelites out there talking about the law of Moses this. Y'all don't need to repent. I'm keeping the law. Right? I'm keeping the law. Right? What about Leviticus 11? What about this? Right? But guess what? You're not keeping the law of life. All right? And because of that, the most out of that one that one sheep that will repent, it will be rejoicing over that one sheep. And we're going to look at that again because that one sheep is big in spirit. He is big in love. He goes all out when it comes to worshiping his father. What are you willing to give up? Do you measure up to be the 144,000? Do you measure up to it? Okay, because there's an angel with a golden rod that measures the 144,000. And the temple is 144,000 cubic feet. So do you measure up? If you don't, as it is written, you know it's going to be, right? So let us look into that analogy once more. We're going to look at the Gospel of Thomas, chapter 2, verses 
All right, the Gospel of Thomas in the Nag Hammadi, and we're going to look at verse 107. And it says, Yeshaya said, The kingdom is like a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One of them, the largest, went to scrape. He left the ninety-nine and sought the one until he found it. After he had gone through this trouble, he said to the sheep, I love you more than the ninety-nine. So you see that? Once again, I mean, that's pretty clean cut right there. Um, the Messiah will indeed leave the 99 to go after that one sheep that wants to worship him in spirit and truth, will worship with him in spirit and truth and oneness with him to the all holy, to the all parent. Okay? And oneness with the Messiah and oneness to the all parent, to the what? The father, the mother, the heavenly father, the earthly mother, to be one. Okay? Now we see that analogy, the big sheep, all right? More love for the big sheep because the big sheep has been what? Living a life of a memorial life to the most high, to show the most high that he's willing to do anything. How far are you willing to go for the love of the most high? Ask yourself that, okay? Do you measure up to the 144K, okay? All day, every day, 144K, all right? Do you measure up, okay? If you don't, you just don't. So we're going to look some more into these lying pastors, the lying leaders of the house of Israel telling you not to go into this book, telling you not to go into that book, telling you, you know what? The people that's going into that book, they've only been in the truth a couple of years, and the madness that they lie, you can see the lies on their face. Indeed, anyone who has the spirit of truth, they can perceive the lies spewing out of their mouth, all right? So we're going to look into that. Ezekiel 34. We're going to read verses 1 through 13. Ezekiel 34, verses 1 through 13. And it reads, And the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Most High power unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Verse 3. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye are excuse me, but ye feed not the flock. Verse 4. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Verse 5. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Verse 6. My sheep wander through all the mountains and upon every hill. Excuse me. Upon every high hill. Yea, my flock were scattered. Upon all the face of the earth, the none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Most High, as I live, saith the Most High power. Surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd seek search for my flock, but the shepherd fed themselves, and fed not my flock. Verse 9. Therefore, O you shepherds, hear the word of the Most High. Thus says the Most High Power, Behold, I am against the shepherd, and I will require my flock at their hands, and I will cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd flee themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Verse 11, For thus says the Most High Power, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep, and seek them out. Verse 12, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he has, excuse me, in the day he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek my sheep and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and all the inhabitations of the countries. So we see right here, woe be to the lying shepherds 
and the day is at hand when the Israelites will no longer listen to your lies, okay? You're spewing lies. You don't want to teach them the law of life, okay? This is the truth, all right? This is coming out. The spirit is coming out, okay? And you can't deny the Most High will set up shepherds according to his own heart that will feed the flock, that will not, what, liquidate the flock, that will not, what, see the flock as merchandise. Because that's all y'all doing. You got the pen tie. You making $450,000 over here. And you're probably making a million over here. You're still calling on Jesus Christ. Y'all just a bunch of Hebrew Christian lights. Okay? Y'all still worship Christios Helios. All right? Son of worship. Hebrew son of worship. Just because you know you're a Hebrew Israelite, that is not the full awakening. Surely the law of life is the full awakening. All right? To not eat of the dead carcasses of the animals. All right? The gospel of the Holy Twelve. No matter what anyone tells you, search it out with your spirit. Okay? I implore you today, weigh it in the balance. Read the gospel of the Holy Twelve. Read the New Testament. And say in your mind, is it more likely that the Most High did want his animals to be slaughtered and killed up and eat their dead body parts that got maggots and parasites in it? Or is it most likely that the Most High love his creatures and bless them from the beginning? Hmm. You weigh that in your head, okay? And we're going to continue with this information. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, okay? Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. And it reads, Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Most High, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Most High, and I will not keep my anger forever. Only acknowledge thy iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Most High thy power and and have scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and have not obeyed my voice, saith the Most High. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Most High, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one from a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. So you see right now, where truly we are in those days when the Most High are calling for the Israelites to repent and to acknowledge that eating of the dead carcasses of the animals is a sin against creation indeed. The Most High say he will not keep his anger forever, for indeed his mercy endures forever. He is love. He's calling you back as a wife, Israel, backsliding, stiff-necked Israelites. Okay, please. The Most High is crying out to you. Come back to the law of life. Come back to the gospel of the Holy Twelve and stop being shrouded in blood. For truly, anyone who kills by the sword will be killed by the sword. If you justify eating things that have been killed by the sword, death shall come knocking at your front door. Okay? And with that being said, we're going to continue. So, our people only acknowledge our sins that we have all fallen short of the glory of the Most High and ate the dead carcasses of the animals and repent, okay? And walk away from the blood, walk away from the maggots, okay? And a disgust, all right? Let us continue. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, Woe be unto the pastor that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Most High, Thus saith the Most High Power of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away. You have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Most High. Verse 3, And I will gather my remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Verse 4, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. No, excuse me, nor be dismayed. 
neither shall be lacking, said the Most High. So, the Most High sent me to gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel to bring us back to the law of life. Those who truly can see the law of life, okay? So we see the Most High son, me, all right, and other shepherds that he would set up according to his heart, right, that will feed the flock according to his heart, all right? The Most High indeed loves the animals and bless the animals, okay? So therefore, the Most High will set up people that are teaching equity to all creation. Now you're talking about Leviticus 11, ah, you see this? The Passover lamb, ah, you eating up dead animals and y'all can't see this. I just don't understand. There is a veil that is still lifted, I mean, excuse me, on your eyes. That veil needs to be lifted, okay? According to as it is written, the Most High will set up shepherds according to his heart. He will give people that will give you what? The spirit of truth, the spirit of understanding and love and equity of all things, all right? And we're amongst that time because truly the awakening of the Hasadims, the Essenes, have begun, all right? And we will show forth our works in power, okay? This is not a dead awakening. This is a live a movement, okay? You're eating dead things. We're eating live things. Everything we speak is life, all right? We are the Essenes, and we are back, okay? So with that being said, we're going to continue. We're going to see judgment for you live pastors, okay? Double judgment for you live pastors. Okay? They get paid for your deeds for lying to the children of Israel and telling them that they can eat dead body parts, which is simply a lie, okay? And so, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 56, verses 10 through 12. And we see these lying pastors have been lying from day one. What they really are are handlers, okay? You see, all these camps, they're basically handlers. What they do, they just handle you, right? Just like we know how they handle what? The, the, the clones and the stars that be about to break with these chips in them and going psychedelic in their mind, right? They have these camp leaders. Most of them probably got chips in them already. All right? They probably already clones and handle. So guess what? They teaching lies to the people. All right? This is indeed the truth, and it can't be hidden anymore. We're bringing out concerning this information, all right? Isaiah 56, verse 10 through 12. And it reads, His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, laying down, love to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarters. Come ye, say that I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink and tomorrow we'll be satisfied this day and much more abundant. So you see these lying dog of a pastors, okay, the watchmen that are blind and can't understand the gospel of the Holy Twelve. Tell my it's heretical. What could you say about the law of life? You ain't even want to go into it. Why? Because people will see that there is something heinously wrong with eating dead carcasses, even on a secular level, all right? Even on a common level. People try to act like they're so into the scriptures and they're so spiritual that they become dumb, all right? To the point where they're looking at the scriptures and you see something that's written and it contradicts itself and you still can't say, okay, what is more likely? Is this more likely or is this more likely? You have not the spirit of truth, but I'm going to reveal to you right now. Sit and reflect on it. Read it. Weigh it in the balance. Weigh it in the balance. Is this more true? Is this more true? Is this more logical or is this more rational? That's all you got to do. The spirit of discernment. Use your ruach of discernment. Okay? And these lying pastors are trying to dump people down, making them docile. You ain't got to go into this book. You don't need that information. Why are you going into this book? You ain't got to be worried about before the flood. You ain't got to be worried about this over here, the spirits of this thing. What you, you know what? You pastors indeed are the lying pastors of Israel, and you will get judged, all right? It is to the time that the Most High has set up pastors according to his heart that will feed the flock, Okay, with 
nothing, looking for nothing. Freely it has been given unto me. Freely I should give to my brothers and sisters. No sin in children of Israelite tithe. No sin in children of Israelite, the children of light, Israelite did. Guess what? The Most High will provide. If it's his will, it's his bill. Okay? And we're going to get the last scripture of the day. And that scripture is going to be out of a same gospel of the Messiah, chapter 58. Yeshia warns of the lying shepherds who will mislead the sheep. And Yeshia said unto his disciples, So shall it be that many lying shepherds will mislead the sheep and seek to devour them and scatter them about, doing so in my name. But I say unto you, the one who misguides the sheep to barren pastors, and say unto them, I am the door and the way, this one would be better if he were never born at all. For many indeed shall come as wolves, guard and sheep dressed to scatter and, to, and destroy. And ye will know them by their merciless ways. For such are the ones who ill treat the innocent creatures of Allah. For I say unto you, if a good shepherd have one hundred sheep, and one of them he had gone astray, this same shepherd will leave the ninety-nine in safety, and then set out to find the one lost. And if so be that he find it, truly I say unto you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine which went not astray and are safe. So it is not the will of the heavenly parent that one of these should perish. Thus the Son of Man is come to the earth to save that which was lost, namely his sheep. Be ye therefore perfect and good shepherds of the flock of Allah and lead the sheep to safety and to life. But some of his disciples understood not the parable Yeshua spoke unto them, and they questioned him further. So, we see right here that the wolves, they will come in sheep's clothing, and they will be exposed by their merciless ways, okay? About eating the creatures of the Most High, they will expose themselves, all right, by their merciless ways, okay? According to as it is written, thus shall it be. So, we see that the Messiah has indeed sought up pastors according to his heart that will give you love, equity, honesty, oneness, community love, okay? Essene community, all for one and one for all. One spirit, one body, one mind, one soul. With that being said, Israel, I hope you can see the lying pastors that are teaching you lies, telling you it's okay to eat dead carcasses, okay? Because it's not. Just wake up and just study that on a secular level, even on a nutritious level, all right? Even on a, just a, diseases and all kind of stuff come with me, all right? Just look it up. With that being said, my people, this is the law of life. The Most High has sent me that I may give you the law of life. The Most High have ordained me that I may be the vessel to bring to you the law of life. And with that being said, I want to say I love you. Shalom. Thank <laughs> you.